I'm Chris Derrick. I work in product development at Sika Gear, mainly on whitetail and turkey products, and I concepted the turkey tool belt. My name is Bo Brooks. Um, I'm an ambassador for Sika, and I work at Higdon Outdoors, and I'm a certified turkey fiend. <laughs> <laughs> I spend pretty much all spring, starting from the beginning of March all the way till the very tip of the end of the season in May, hunting turkeys every single day. You know, when we first came out with the vest, like, I am not a big vest guy. I've never been a big vest guy. I've always had like a little mouth, I mean, box call holder, put my mouth calls right here, filling my pockets with pop tarts, you know, and I've never, I just don't like having that big clunky, and there's nothing wrong with it because there's a lot of people that sit all day, you know, but I want to be able to move. I want to be able to be free. I want, I want to be able to move around when I'm crawling and stuff. I don't have 10 pounds of weight on my back. And so, you know, when we first got the vest in, in the mail, I picked it up and I'm like, okay, this is something that I can get with. And I, I wore it that first year. It was just like, finally, we're sitting on something that's not going to get in my way, going to hold all my stuff, but it's just, I can, it works with my style of hunting. And there's so many days where I'm like walking in, like when I was guiding um, turkey hunts on like, public land, I take these guys in a half day, 13 miles. And I'm like, I about kill them because they're wearing these big vests and, and I just couldn't wear that. Now, nowadays I can throw this vest on. It's not gonna take up a ton of room, you know, and it's gonna, it's gonna be super easy. And then when you guys sent me the tool belt, I was like, okay, here we go. Now we got something that I can just throw around really easy, simple, even cutting off more than what was originally there. And I mean, dude, that. The more minimal we can go, the better, in my opinion, for turkey hunting. I, I'm super crawling around, getting in the brush, walking really far, running at times for no reason probably, but you know, I, I, I just love that minimalist mentality. So. I think that's part of what makes turkey hunting so fun. You know, it's, yep. it's just one of those applications that you get out there, you get to talk, yep. you get to hear back, you get active feedback, and you get to make moves. Yep. And I think that's why I've always been so drawn to turkey hunting, even yep. growing up like hunting whitetails, it was just whenever spring would roll around yep. and turkeys came in, that was like the closest thing I could get to elk in Alabama. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, that was, they that are was the elk of thing. Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, you know, that was just so much fun. And that's what I think makes turkey hunting great. It, oh. it just sucks you in. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm 100% with you. And that's that's kind of what's built my mantra as a turkey hunter is my elk hunting background. I hunt turkeys like they're elk. I didn't grow up a southerner that, you know, and I've learned from everyone in the south. There's so much to learn, but there's that run and gun. Like when I go down to the south and I hunt all these states, I can walk in like f four miles. And I, I mean, those mountains make me feel good, too, <laughs> because there's no elevation and we're just running. And it's, it's just like if I push a little bit harder than the next person will, I'm gonna get into birds that wanna play the game that nine, 10, 11 o'clock range that you know by the road may not act quite right. And that's one of the things too, is like when when I first was talking about the concept, like I, you've probably used some of the old hip belts that came I did. out. And I it, did. And it was like your box call would hang down and it and was like all this, <laughs> yeah. Every time you kink, 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 and it's making noise. Every single step. Every single step. and I. I'm not gonna lie, we've had turkeys gobble to it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on accident, but it's not ideal, especially yeah. when you're, especially when you get crawling, where mm -hmm. you're trying to actually do something. What's so great about this too, is it's not attached to your leg. Mm -hmm. This is something you can move around, pull it to the front, grab your things, move it to the back, move it to the side. Mm -hmm. And it's just 100%, you know, mobile and 100% contained and like that box call holder and everything is just like so thought out. Yeah, and for, for me, it was, I started looking actually, uh, I came from the fishing world actually first and yeah. one of the things that I saw is like the fly fishing world, it's the same way with the vest, is when you, when you looked at the vest and the fly fishing, you see the old videos and fly, fly anglers would wear vest and then now when you go out on the river, a lot of times what you're seeing is people that are usually in hip packs or sling packs. Yeah. And if you really think about what you're doing in those applications and why that's become so popular, in those you're using tippet, you're using flies, nippers, yep. floatant, all of these these pieces for when you're moving around and then when you go into your active casting, you, you know, you want it out of the way. Yep. Well, it's really the same thing with turkey except now it's diaphragms, it's pot calls, it's strikers, yep. 
It's, you know, all Pop of those. Tarts. Yeah, <laughs> Pop-Tarts, yeah. shot calls, all that good <laughs> stuff. And so it was the idea is how do we manage that in as small of a, pay, a space as possible yep. where it still allowed you to curl up and get up back where your knee's up, you're gonna take mm -hmm. the shot. So that's mm -hmm. really the only difference if you look at it yep. in the scheme of things. And then so trying to get all of that where you can carry everything you'd really carry in a vest, yep. but then in a small compact application that you could get out of the way when you don't need yeah, it. No matter what, what it is, you could be sitting on the side of a tree like this, you could be sitting with your back to the tree, you could be sitting in some brush like this, you can move it to the application that you need it. Mm -hmm. And that's just a, that's one thing that this vest doesn't have. I mean, you're gonna have to sit like this and you're trying to get your back straight up on a tree. And mm -hmm. that's just what you gotta do. And that's where the, the tool belt is superior. And, and the one thing I've noticed this year too, what I really like is how, like, like you said, how compact this thing is mm -hmm. when I'm traveling. I just slap that thing. I can just pick it up, throw it in the back of the truck, throw it in there. It's taking up no room. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's just so simple and it fits really nice. It's like my wife gets those packing cubes. When we go <laughs> travel, you get everything condensed so well. And it's, I am not a great organizer, mm -hmm. but with that, I feel like I'm just, you know, on home and garden. I'm just incredible at it. And so, you know, it's, it's so cool. And that's what that's kind of fun. So if we pull it up, the great thing is just like this is all of your tools are in your toolbox essentially, and then you can just set it on the the you know on your on your console of your truck. Literally, where you're running around. Yeah, you and can then grab you pull stuff it from it there. Yes, I mean like I'm driving down the highway, grab your box, call out. You're gonna go locate. You just throw it back in there, and then you don't have to worry about it getting dusty. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it getting wet. You don't have to worry about coke spilling on it. And what I like about this is it's the minimalist concept. Mm -hmm but without actually having to be a minimalist. It just being able to carry essentially everything that you would need to do just in a different format. So we look at a, you know, an item like this, it's not just for your, you know, I'm just running in really far type of guy. There's lots of guys that are taking their kids that have their blind set up and they gotta have their stuff there, but they, they're only gonna have to go before work and they're gonna take their kids there and they're gonna go to school. And you can just throw this in there and you can carry your stool underneath, whatever, and just take your kid out, have a great time with them. And so really what it is, is just making it easier to get all your stuff there. Because like you said, being a minimalist without being a minimalist, your mm -hmm. stuff's still there. Mm -hmm. It's just all very compact and easy to get to. Yeah, and, and, and from, you know, just being able to carry like on the bottom, you were talking about like this seat, just so, so you're aware, the seat is a great mobile application seat. Yep. I would say like 30 minutes, yep. you're going to throw it down. It's just something quick you need. You're on mm -hmm. a bird. You need something to put on the ground because it's maybe wet in the morning from yep. rain or you just need a little bit of padding. But there are some straps on the bottom. So I carry like a, a company called Click. They make this really small compact chair, yep. super fast to pop together. Yep. And I can carry that. So if I'm going to sit on a food source for the afternoon, yep. I'll carry a supplemental chair for that purposes. And yep. then if I know I'm not going to be using that, that stays at home yep. and I only carry it when I need it. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's just what's so cool is that, you know, there's so many ways to actually get the most out of this belt. And there's a lot of awesome features in that you know, situation. Like you could, you could possibly with that chair, I, I fit two in there. You, mm -hmm. know, you take one for you and your kid. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's, that's why we do it. That's what's mm -hmm. so cool about turkey hunting is that's why I got into it. I got to do this stuff with my dad. And whether you're sitting on a food, food source, whether you're walking 13 to 20 miles, whether you're you know, going to sit all day, you know, you can know that you're going to be comfortable and you can do it all without having to take you know 20 pounds of stuff and so you're more comfortable at the end of the day yeah absolutely let's talk friction first yeah absolutely so front uh this is very very simple to open if you're if you're wearing this on the front of your body it's going to slide open and you're going to see on the inside here uh, to uh, an area for two pot calls. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I use the middle section for a conditioning tool. Yep. Um, so you'll have to go to work. And then if you flip it around here on this side, this is where all your strikers go. You can carry up to four inside of here. They stow vertically right here if you want to uh, have them in use. So you can mm -hmm. pull out you know, your friction call. You can go through here if you're changing around, if you're using two different strikers like this wing bone yeah. and this make two distinctly different noises. Yep. Uh, and so I love having two separate um, uh, friction calls out to be able to do that. And then your diaphragms are gonna fit in the slots yep. out in the front, which I think you're unique 
So one thing about you is I feel like you could walk around with literally just this yeah. and be all that you need for the day. Uh, um, but I, the rest of us uh, have a, a greater toolkit for sure. Well, I, I will say one thing though, this is the biggest thing and we'll, we're talking about all these different calls. If you look at my tool belt, you'd think it'd be empty, right? Mm -hmm. You say that's kind of what people would think, but every single one of those mouth call holders is full. Every one of the pot call holders are full. The box call holder, I have it all. I just love having this, the easy, fast stuff because I can just run, put it away, cuck, 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 and it's right on the outside. That's, we actually yeah. haven't shown that yet, but yeah. it's a great segue into it. Is it's a run and gun, man. It's just so yeah, and right on the outside here. If you want to stow for the outside, so let's say you've closed this up, and I noticed you use this a lot. I do. You might throw a striker on the outside, and then a, a diaphragm call. on the sides. So you can run around. You won't even have to open this up uh, for the situation for you have a diaphragm. pot call in your gun. Yep. And then you just you just you know you put your gun down, call with your striker, and you put it away. And I mean, it's just so much more simple than, you know, just gr having to, you know, move around a bunch. And I, I just like having that running gun. And then after your, you know, heat of the battle's over, put it away, mm -hmm. nice and clean, because you know how those humid days are. Mm -hmm. And your pot calls will be toast if yes. you get any humidity on them and, or, or any moisture. And so like having them put away like that, especially for the pot call, it's so important. And that's why I always run two because one of them's gonna get wet. One of them's gonna get wet, yeah. especially on a dewy morning or a misty morning. Yep. And let's talk about moisture because this is one of the key features. Like I use this a lot. This yes. Helps. So if you're out and you're running um, out of the back comes a deployable rain fly yep. that literally just nests right over the top and right behind the buckles here that you would put the straps on, they hook on to both sides of that. So you can run this deployable rain fly for heavier rain situations yep. to add additional waterproof protection, and then it just will pop right back off just by releasing these hooks. It's, um, so they just come off, stuff it away, and then your rain flies, you never lose it. It's yep. not a separate piece that's gonna go away. It's just something- I need that, I it. lose everything. Literally everything I have. And 100%, so I use that. It's, it's, Inevitable. Mm -hmm. You're hunting, in the, especially the south in the spring, anywhere in the spring. You're, it's a beautiful sunny day. Birds are chirping. They're gobbling. Then all of a sudden, you, you're like, oh, no. And here comes the black clouds. And it's just, and you're just, and I'm, I always, my box call would get wet. In every scenario where I had mm -hmm. my box calls and stuff, having that slap over the top, your stuff's gonna stay good. You don't think about it in the moment, but then you're like, man, this is kind of handy. My calls are good and I'm not gonna be out of it the rest of the day. I, got, I can't, don't have to go back to the truck and dry off my pot calls. These are ruined or my box calls. So. Yeah, so that's that's a great feature for your pot calls. Um, when you flip around shot calls, yep. um, you know, right here, keeping either like a peacock or a crow call, you yep. can run uh, two, two smaller size calls. Yep. Uh, in, in the top lid, there's some mesh storage areas for yep. more shock calls. Um, but these are, these are great. I use the owl more than the crow. Yep. Um, just but anything to make noise just to get them to snap back at you. Yeah, absolutely. You were talking about crawling around. One of the things like from a hydration standpoint, if you're taking a water bottle or an algae and putting it inside of here, uh, as Bo was talking about, if you if you don't want this to fall out, you can just take this strap, go right over the tip here, yep. and now this is fully contained for when you need it. Uh, and then if you are crawling on a bird, you're not gonna dump out your hydration. And you can attach it to the other side too. So yep. if you're left eye, so I, since I'm right eye dominant, I keep it on my right hip typically. Yep. Uh, and it's designed where this can either sit to the side of your leg or between your legs. Uh, that way, if you're running in the pack while you're sitting on your hip mm -hmm. or fully in the center, it won't be in your way and sitting directly on your leg. So we yep. were even thinking through those little details um, uh, when it comes to that. Um, and then on the front pocket, you know, uh, if you're keeping, you know, I keep, I obviously keep headlamp. something like a headlamp in there, uh, keys, um, and then your your uh, shells can go inside of here. I normally just keep three shells for storage and then maybe yep. a fourth in there. Yep. I've never really needed more because the three are in my gun or yep. they're used and then yep. they go away for storage. Yeah. That's a, a good uh, tip set up on maybe how to be able to use those types of features on here, I would say for the seat. A lot of people uh, uh, don't know this, 
But when you're wearing this, these, these surface mount buckles, you can just be able to mount this right on the front by clicking these on. Uh, I would definitely suggest using these. So this seat is designed not to flap around and hit you in the butt. And then I'm sure everybody's wondering, but what about the box call? So this is the this is, best part of it. Yes, the cl it's it's a bit uh, like a clown car because things keep coming out of it. Yeah. But on the front side uh, here, that's what turkey an, hunting is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can pull out your 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 box. It comes out. It's got a magnetic holder, but it does have a secondary closure. You can slide in depending on your your box call construction and shape. You, I tend to run mine with my paddle down. Mm. I think some, yeah, so you run yours with your paddle up sometimes, and then it just slides right back in here. This closes, magnet holds it shut, but if then you want to use the secondary strap on the bottom, yeah. you can just pull that around. That has been my favorite feature <laughs> because I, no matter what, you always have a little bit of, and I, this literally, no turkey sounds right there. <laughs> totally so, quiet. Totally quiet. And then, man, one thing that was up in here, I ran my dew point up here and that was sweet. Yeah, and so this is one full jacket right here. Yes. And then if you need insulation, cause it's very cold in early season yeah, sometimes. especially up here. I tend to strap that on the bottom. Yeah. Um, one little tip to you see how I, I've got this run up. This is the best way to pack a rain jacket. So is if you have a rain jacket with a hood. How did you do that? So just, this is just one little tip. Take your rain jacket, lay it out, fold your arms across the front, fold it this way, this way, then roll it up like this, just like a, and then tuck it inside the hood. And then if you have a drawstring, you can draw that drawstring tight and then run that uh, loop around this. And then I do this with my insulation, but now your rain jacket's basically stuffed into a little containment. Uh, I would recommend on the seat, again, using always these surface mount buckles that you see on the front um, versus these bottom straps, uh, just so you don't slip out and lose your seat anywhere. Uh, so that, that's do. a great, yeah, that's a great uh, tip. And then, like I said, if you want supplemental seating, yeah. like, you know, for the, like if you're going to hunt a food source late morning or after yeah. a rain, uh, bring that along with you. And there's tons of options for seats. Yeah. So just to wrap this up, if you're a grab and go hunter, that wants everything in a minimalist format, yep. it's the turkey tool belt. Minimalist in mind, turkey tool belt. I love it so much, but the vest is not to be stepped on. The vest has absolutely changed my life. And so let's jump into it. This vest is so easy and it's just bringing back that whole minimalist topic. You know, I think that that's what Sitka does such a great job with is just bringing all the stuff that you need into a format that's not so clunky, not so heavy, not so, you know, bringing the big game world into the turkey world in this scenario, it's like, okay, I can finally do what I need to do. I finally can walk where I need to walk without just being so hot all the time. Since we're on the vest, why don't we talk about some of the features? I'm in, let's do it. On the front, it's on friction, open up, you've got two uh, pot calls. Uh, you can hold one in the front, yep. one in the back, uh, and uh, really quick storage, really quiet storage, just slides in like that, uh, yeah. all on the left-hand side, uh, along with your diaphragms. Yep. Uh, uh, you can store three in the front. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, several different calls inside of there in a very small space. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy. This does stay, stay closed really mm -hmm. easy. I mean, it, what I, I, that's a big part of it. Everything needs to be so quiet mm -hmm. when you're hunting turkeys. And obviously, you know, there's nothing more quiet than that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a big deal. And then when you're pulling your strikers out, uh, there's a storage right here that's essentially very water resistant storage uh, with gore, gore material, uh, Gore-Tex material right there. Uh, and your strikers can go out and be quickly stored in these side wall spaces on your box call holder. Yeah, um, we do have a, on this one, there is a magnet. Mm -hmm. And so you aren't going to lose it. That's mm -hmm. a big deal for sure. Yeah, if you're crawling and then if you want some additional storage, uh, you can use this if you want to carry additional strikers inside of here uh, as well. So that's a, a well-contained pocket. Uh, and then box calls, uh, obviously these can go uh, right inside of here, mm -hmm. be able to pull it out quickly, do everything you need to do. I typically carry it towards the paddle, towards my body. I know some people uh, run it this way. 
figure out what works right for you because uh, depending on how you run, uh, that will help you from uh, inadvertently hitting it and making it squeak for yeah, me paddle backwards. Yeah, it's got those pads in there too that yes. kind of squeeze it and mm -hmm. so it's not gonna make any noise. Yeah, this is not just a loose bag with nothing. It's, yep. it's actually designed to contain everything as well. Yep. And then you're uh, right here on the outside uh, next to it is a shot call uh, holder. Uh, uh, you know, I've also used a range finder inside of there mm -hmm. too as well. So depending on what you're running, you can run your shot calls. We've got a crow. Uh, I think this might be a peacock. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, inside of here, and uh, you can run that that way. So essentially, you've got everything you need on the chest part of your body. All can be ac accessed from the front uh, uh, with that access point without having to be able to go into the back of the pack. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, we get inside here. Remember, we... This is one of the coolest parts too. You've got these nice mesh pockets here. And you know, there's a lot of different things that you can put in there. Licenses, and I again, there's a lot of paper states out there. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna keep close to your body. You're not gonna lose it. And I mean, there's times I'll throw my wallet in there, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the biggest reason I like having my license in there is so I always have it. Mm -hmm. If I'm turkey hunting, I'm always gonna have it on my body, on my person. It's just, just it's a legal and right thing to do. This is by far my favorite part because it just, man, it just is so simple and easy. And I just like always want it out of the way. And yeah. Until I can just, I, do, I keep mine actually a little looser than that because I'm just like. Yep. And it's, it's never necessarily hitting me, but it's, it's so simple because I'm just down, up, down, up. And, and it's it, so it, much easier. And it takes a little practice, but once you learn how to do this, it's super simple. You just reach back. There's actually two thumb holders right here on these slide buckles, and then you can just slide this down. Oh, it yeah. flips down, and then just to pull it back up, it rolls back up, and then you just pull them. They'll be looped, and that will actually hold it tight. But the whole the, one of the things that always drove me crazy about a lot of my old vests that I had, I can remember when I was in high school, they had like a magnet you were always trying to find right here. Oh, yeah. And that would come off. It would fall down and be hitting you in the back of the legs and be running around. It'd be right here for me, yep. right in the back of my, I can remember the feeling. And it, I mean, it brings it back to a lot of good days, but a lot of frustrating days as well. It's just so light, it's barely even there, but it gives you way more cushion than a guy would think. You know, I get a lot of questions about the vest. It's one thing, it's a very different than anything that's been out there on the market today. Everyone's like, oh man, you know, the seat. And I'm telling you, it's just like the waiters when the waiters came out. You try them and you wear them, you'll never go back. I've really liked this. Like I'm, I'm with you on uh, when, when I am running a vest, uh, this is, you know, and it's not that like what you pick the one that's right for you. I yep. would say, you know, you'll find like there's going to be people that are just going to be, this is the right thing. This is what I'm looking for. Um, you know, I, I've run this quite a bit. I, I wear this uh, often still on hunts. Uh, and then when I like to keep things, especially on my Western hunts for um, uh, Miriam's and stuff like that. I'm running around the truck with my optics because it seems like the spot and stock uh, comes into play a whole lot more. So yeah. I'm glassing all the time now. Yeah. And that that's where I would say like between trying to decide between the vest, what's right for me, I would just say looking at what format, you know, you want for as a hunter, whether or not you prefer to have things contained on your body. You're just used to running this things way, but you didn't like the big sloppy vests that maybe were out there before yep. that you carried too much. That was another thing. Some vests that I used to have had so many pockets. And if there's a pocket, I usually would find a place to put or something. something. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's the thing is everything that Sika does that I've, through the years, it's just so purposeful. Everything is just so well thought out. And like, I find myself utilizing all these pockets, but I, it's just always when I go to grab something, always seems like it's in the right spot. That's just one more thing I I love to talk about too. Is you know what's so cool is these these clips. Like this is the most simple, easy clip for taking it on and off I've ever found. In the dark, whatever, you just and I want to take it off. You know, do something, put it back on. You know, it's so simple, so easy. And it's very, very quiet. There's a lot of them out there that have buckles that go kink in the morning. And you got a tom that's roosted 100 yards from you. Listen to this. The last thing that I can really say about this is, and it goes to the tool belt as well. 
You start running this stuff, and those times that you want to make that move, you're real. You're sitting there. You've got all this stuff on, versus sitting there and have this really minimalist, easy tool belt vest. You know, it's 10, 11 o'clock. You haven't heard of Tom. You're thinking it's getting hot. Do I go back to the truck, or do I keep hunting? You'd be surprised how many more times you're going to get more out of your day because you're willing to walk farther, work harder, and be more successful in that light. You know, obviously I'm a photographer, so I love having my camera batteries in there mm -hmm. and things that I don't want to lose. And my keys, my keys live in the bottom pocket. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a big deal for me because I lose my keys all the time. And so I don't have the key that I actually start my truck. It's just a fob. Mm -hmm. and so I just always have my vest inside and I can drive and I hopefully know it's going to be in there always. And same thing with my wallet. Additional shells if you're doing those. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, yeah, I totally forgot. I do keep shells in there too. And then your adjustment on the side can just be quickly be done this way. So if you're running anywhere from small to double extra large, you well, can what is, How does that sizing work? How, what would you say for like, say me versus my wife my wife is you know like five four what would she want to be on really small or like she would probably go to the smallest setting yeah. you're probably somewhere between medium and large and it, it fits everyone you mm -hmm. can get to a certain point it'll go no matter what it's going to fit yeah there's going to be a lot of uh larger guys that are going to be able to have this and you can size this up because nothing's worse when it doesn't fit or restricts you yep. uh you can be able to do that then the back setting Great setup here for being able to throw your rain jacket inside of here. Uh, there's an additional um, pocket right here. Open this back up uh, and then your water bladder, if you're running a water bladder, can go inside of here, attach to this, run it right out here and through on the front so you can constantly hydrate while you're on the move. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, this, you know, one of the, the features with the opposing buckles that we have here, uh, if I'm running a hen decoy, uh, I can run her on the back of here as well. Uh, no problem about strapping it around there. I'll, I'll wrap these, they go across the body uh, as well. And then the lower ones just get wrapped around the neck. So I just go it like this and yep. it basically makes the cinch point and it can't slide down. Yeah, so if you do kill, what uh, I'll do, because it does take a little bit of practice to get this right. Uh, first time with your first bird, it, it, a lot of times, like I had this happen to me at the beginning, it, it, because I wasn't doing it correctly, bird was hanging way down low. So the, the straps that I go around here, they need to sit high on your bird's leg, because you want the leg sitting up on top of your shoulder. And then I'll run that bird right around to the back uh, and uh, your seat will be able to get out of the way for this. Uh, but then I'll take these and go around the bird's neck uh, like this to be able yeah. to cinch it down. It kind of holds the bird up, cinch it tight, and then run this across the body. Will he sit right here a uh, little bit? I have never run it that way, but I'm assuming you could do that that way. And so will you take this off to put your bird on? So you're going to take it off, yes. put it on the ground, and then you're going to, you're going to, L cut and backpack it up. You know, get like this and yes. put it on. Yeah. Fully put it back on. Uh, you'll play with it. Uh, you'll figure out how to get it right. Uh, and then once you get your system down, you'll yep. be fine for the rest of the season. For but sure. that's a great way to be able to use that properly. Yep. So also after you killed your bird, you know, maybe you're hot, you can dump your rain jacket inside of this stuff sack, but you can also deploy uh, the orange straps just for additional safety yeah. on your way out. Especially on public land. Yes. You, know, you get down to some of those places, it's it's tight. And people are ex ready to shoot a turkey. So they see a turkey's head going through the woods. Yeah, <laughs> try and keep it <laughs> a little no low. Yeah I, yeah, I have a no blue policy. So uh, <laughs> uh, um, so that, that actually helps. Uh, you can stuff all your gear. You can get it out, uh, everything that you're going to do. And then obviously when you're on the way out, breathability is going to come uh, very, very important uh, on the Logner hikes. So uh, this, this is designed again on a pack chassis. So you can see this back too as well. You're going to see these panels that just allows breathability. There's an air mesh, air mesh on the shoulder straps. Yeah. Uh, and, and this just is essentially going to allow air to move around your back. Yep. Uh, way more comfortable. Yep. Uh, and that's the whole point is just moving air. Yeah, no, that's, it's definitely been a big deal for me. In reality, they both carry the same thing, both the vest and the tool belt. Uh, this is everything that you need in a minimalist format on your chest and on your back. And this carries it in a hip pack format. I think that's really the, the deciding decision for most people 
in, in either situation on which, which pack's going to be right for me. Yeah, absolutely.